The black bear is coming out of hibernation. That means that it sleeps all winter to save energy, and now it is eager for a long overdue breakfast. The cubs were born two months before the black bear finished its hibernation. But the mother does not start to look after the young until she emerges from her long sleep. Bears are often seen scratching themselves this time of year in order to get rid of any excess fur now that the weather is getting milder. The cubs are very active and will happily play on their own but there is always an invisible string tying the cubs and the mother together and if this string is crossed by man or animal the black bear can become quite dangerous. It is always looking out for dangers that might threaten the cubs. The porcupine is oddly dangerous. The bear often attacks this prickly animal, but always ends up with a mouthful of quills. This makes it difficult for the bear to eat, and it may even starve to death. Yes, bears do eat grass, especially just after hibernation. It acts as a very efficient laxative and also as an antacid agent and could be called the Alka-Seltzer for bears. Black bears live in mountains or, as here, forests, where the undergrowth gives shelter not only to the bear but also to the white-tailed deer and this large bull elk with its fuzzy antlers. The forest lakes also provide an ideal and safe environment for the Canadian goose. The bear can appear to have many human qualities. It is playful, friendly, and intelligent. The Indians that used to live in this area considered the bear superior to all other animals and equal to man. And like man, it eats a great variety of food, meat, fish, fruit, plus bark and insects. The rivers running down from the mountains follow the paths of ancient glaciers. These trails, much wider than today's rivers, are called glacial moraines and are evidence of the last ice age when much of this area was covered in ice. While the river flows from the mountains to the sea, the Pacific salmon can be seen traveling in the opposite direction every summer. The salmon is born in the river's fresh water, but lives in the ocean. When it is time to spawn, it returns to its own birthplace to lay its eggs and subsequently die. Not all salmons reach their spawning ground as predators like the raccoon take advantage of this yearly migration. It is an excellent fisherman and has developed the technique of chasing the salmon into shallow water to make the catch easier. The black bear is also rather fond of salmon but is not as good a fisherman as the raccoon. It has been known to bully the raccoon and steal its catch. Though the rightful owner is reluctant to give this up, a couple of menacing growls settles the matter and the fish changes owner. There is always someone bigger. The only other animal the black bear fears is the grizzly. It is bigger, stronger, and fiercer, and the mere sight of it makes the former bully take to its heels. It is fortunate for the black bear that it can climb trees, as this is beyond the capabilities of the grizzly. The grizzly bear was once quite common and has no natural enemies in the wild thanks to its strength, size, and aggression. But because it is confrontational and will rarely, if ever, run away, it has been hunted vigorously by its only enemy, man, with a gun. The cubs are able to climb trees when they are three months old. When danger threatens, they climb the nearest tree on a signal from the mother, and they don't come down until they get another signal telling them that the danger has passed. The cubs also climb for fun, and to develop skills they will need in the future. The black bear rarely moves far away from the trees. Despite its size, it is quite a timid animal 
and has a need for the protection offered by them. The grizzly has gone and it is safe to return to the river for a spot of fishing. Though the idea is that the cubs should learn from the mother, the world is still a new and fascinating place where everything has to be explored, even if it means falling off a tree. The black bear is not an expert fisherman, and catching fish is not, as the saying goes, as easy as falling off a log. However, when the... The black bear is not only a poor fisherman, it is also quite a poor hunter and never stalks prey. Their best senses, hearing and smell, are used more for defence than attack. The truth is that this bear is not a great meat eater. By temperament and by actual diet, it is predominantly vegetarian. One thing that is true about all bears is that they are immensely strong and stripping bark off trees to get to the insects underneath is as easy as peeling an orange for anyone else. It will be some time before the cubs get that strong, but they will. Black bears can do a lot of damage to trees. They not only strip the bark, but also eat the leaves. During the summer, they can eat as much as 20 kilograms of leaves every day. And with cubs feeding as well, it certainly mounts up. The cubs stay with the mother through the summer and the coming winter and don't leave until the following spring when the mother is ready to mate again. The male black bear is much larger than the female, weighing around 200 kilograms. The bears only spend a couple of weeks together during mating, so the male is a very solitary animal that doesn't like intruders in its territory. It makes other bears aware that they are trespassing and are generally unwelcome by leaving deep claw marks high up on the trees. It is a popular story that bears like honey. This is true. They absolutely adore the stuff and will go to almost any lengths to get some. When it comes to honey, the bear has a serious sweet tooth. The bee's sting can't penetrate the bear's thick fur and will scoop out honey and bees without discrimination. This is a real treat. After a while, things can become a little sticky as the bees also attack the bear's nose and mouth. Finally, it has had enough and decides to beat a retreat to cool off in the river. 